Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm excited to share with you a recipe. It supports the liver of our dogs. Sometimes we have blood results of our dogs where it shows an elevated liver enzyme count, or sometimes we have dogs that need to have some liver drainage and they may have some liver illnesses. So this is a great recipe to support those of our pets that may have some liver issues, but it's also just a great overall recipe. And all of the recipes that I do can be used for your dogs no matter what. They're all just overall healthy recipes, but I do tell you about recipes that are specifically targeted to certain ailments or certain organs of your pet's bodies. So let's get started. So those of you that don't know me, I am Jen Lee, and this is my Gentastic journey through semi-retirement. And you should know that most of my content is around the things that bring me joy in life. One of those things is we have five beautiful dogs. They're all rescues and they all have different issues that came with them that I feel like it's my responsibility as a pet owner and a pet lover. These are my family members. I feel like it's on me to help them live their happiest and healthiest lives. And one of the ways that I can do that, and it's a very easy way, I'm going to show you how quick and easy this is. I make food for my dogs. And the reason that I do that is I've done a lot of research over the years. As I've gotten dogs that are truly unhealthy, my husband and I typically try and go after a dog that may is unhealthier than the average dog maybe a dog that others may not have the means or the capabilities to bring them back to full health so we tend to rescue dogs that have health conditions or as an example we have a deaf dog three dogs with mitral valve disease one of them has luxating patellas so we try and find dogs that would really benefit from a much healthier lifestyle and dog owners that absolutely would do just about anything for them. So I appreciate you joining my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe. A lot of my content is about dogs and their health and grooming and just different ways to bring joy into their lives and keep them happy and healthy. I also have some hobbies and we love to RV and human health. So there's a lot of different content on my channel check it out and please know in the description box below i include just about everything i can think of to help you through this process because i think this is the easiest and healthiest way to give our dogs the perfect nutrition i want to do everything i can to make this easy for you so i have linked all the ingredients the recipe that i use all my tools that i use i also include a feeding chart so if you don't know how much food of this type of food to feed your dog I have that as well. And we feed two to 3% of our dog's weight in food. So please check out that feeding chart in the description box below. When I make food, I'm cooking food actually for my dogs and I have five dogs. So sometimes you'll notice that I have a, a lot more stuff here than you might have. And I'll try and make sure that I tell you what the recipe would be for one dog. I think that's a little bit simpler and then you can always multiply it out kind of like I do and make just a bigger batch. This is gonna be a very small batch for me. You want to make this as easy as you can for yourselves. I usually cook food for my dogs every three days. You don't need to do it that often. I just have a lot more dogs, so I go through this a lot faster and there's only so much that I can put in this gigantic crock pot. So I have to cook a little bit more often the, than the average dog owner. But you can pretty much do this every four or five days. Just like with human food, you wanna make sure that you're not keeping dog food in the refrigerator when it's fresh like this in the refrigerator for more than four or five days, just like with human food. Let me start by telling you what we're gonna put into this batch. For our liver support recipe, I've got ground beef. Now this is three pounds of ground beef. I usually cook about six pounds, but for this particular day, I'm cooking just three pounds of ground beef. For this recipe, it calls for one pound. Then you'll need beef liver. This is beef liver. I buy this from a company called Wild Fork. You can get organ meats very inexpensively from a lot of meat companies. It's often hard, at least for me, I'm in southeastern Wisconsin, it's sometimes hard for me to find quality organ meats or any organ meats for that matter at my grocery stores out here. So I do order my beef heart, my beef liver, all those kinds of things from meat companies. And a little tip, 
If you have an organ that is causing your pet's issues, like I have three dogs with mitral valve disease and they have heart murmurs, what I feed them beef heart. So if you have a dog with a under a performing organ, you can feed that organ to them as part of their nutrition. So in this example, because this is a liver support recipe, we're going to use beef liver to support their livers. So we've got our ground beef, one pound, we've got two ounces of beef liver. And then the next ingredient is gonna be our greens. So you know I usually feed cruciferous vegetables to my dogs. It's usually only 10 to 20% of the recipe. Dogs are considered omnivores and carnivores, depending on which research you look at. And I've been knocked for saying that they're carnivores, but dogs were originally created to be carnivores, but the domestication of dogs have really turned them into omnivores and omnivores eat both vegetables and meats, but their teeth are designed to chew meat. I've done enough research to determine that I think it's best for my dogs to have a limited amount of vegetable. And I cook that vegetable downs considerably in my crock pot. And then I also grind it because their teeth are designed to grind meat. If you give your dog, say raw or even cooked broccoli or carrots, you'll notice in their poop, if you look at their poop, which I know not a lot of us are going and looking at the poop, but as you're picking the poop up in your yard, take a look at the poop and you'll notice that you'll see whole pieces of vegetables in their poop. And that's because their teeth are not designed to chew it and also their bodies are not really designed to digest it well. When I feed vegetables to my dogs, I make sure it's cooked very well and I make sure that it is ground up so that I don't see all that in their poop and that they're able to utilize the nutrients from those foods. For the greens, you can use lots of different types of greens. You can use spinach, you can use kale, dandelion greens, collard greens, you can use beet greens. So lots of different greens for this recipe. I've opted for kale. I feed my dogs kale probably every third batch. As I mentioned, I cook for them every three to four days, so they're getting this three week and a half or so. And the reason why I choose kale over spinach is because spinach is high in oxalates. And although there hasn't been a ton of research done regarding oxalates in dogs, high oxalates in humans can cause a host of issues. So I just opt for kale very similar to spinach, but lower in oxalates. I also have some leftover dandelion greens. And so this is just a very small amount that I had left over from a previous recipe. I threw it in the freezer. And so I'm going to put this in the recipe. It also calls for celery. I store my celery in tin foil. My grandmother told me to do that when I was young and I've always done it. Tin foil, I know there's information out there about how Tin foil can leach into your food, but only when it's heated, so not an issue for cold food. So we're going to put some celery into our recipe. Also, eggs are included in this recipe, so we will need one egg without the shells. I'll talk a little bit about the shells in a minute, but we definitely don't want to put the shells into a cooking device. Okay, so I need eight ounces of the greens. And so I have plenty of that here and here. We need two stalks of our celery and eight ounces of pumpkin. This is 100% pure pumpkin. You don't wanna get pumpkin pie, you know, canned pumpkin pie mix. You just want pure pumpkin. And so we'll use eight ounces of that. And then it also calls for beets. It calls for two ounces of beets and then two cans of sardines. And I use sardines that are in water and that are unsalted. So they're a little bit harder to find. Dogs can have a little bit of salt in their diet. Every animal needs a little bit of salt in their diet or sodium in their diet. A lot of the foods and the way meats and things are maintained, even in this can of pumpkin, there is five milligrams of sodium. So they get enough sodium in the foods that we're putting in and we don't wanna add any extra. So we wanna make sure that the foods that we put in that are typically higher in sodium, that we make sure that those things come unsalted. So if you use bone broth 
in your recipes, which I typically do, you're going to want to make sure that's unsalted. You're going to want to make sure that your sardines are unsalted. And I'm going to pull those out at the end because they actually go into the batch when it's cool. And so does the pumpkin. You can put the pumpkin in ahead of time, but I just put it in when it's cool. For now, we're going to put the ground beef, the liver, one pound of ground beef, two ounces of liver, eight ounces of greens, two stalks of celery, one egg into our crock pot. So I'm going to get working on that and then I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about how long we're going to cook this. Okay, put in the last of the ingredients into my crock pot and I cut a lot of that out because I have found through making these videos that if I am trying to put things into a crock pot while I'm also talking, I tend to talk a little slower and none of us have extra time, right? So that's why we're making a super quick, super healthy recipe for our dogs because we don't have time. We're busy. Our lives are busy and we have competing things vying for our time. So let's make this quick. All right. So you put all your ingredients into a crock pot. And then the next thing that we need to do, just like we would for human food, is we need to add a little bit of liquid to this. You can do that in a variety of ways. You can use unsalted bone broth in here, or you can use water. For today, I'm going to use water. I typically use bone broth that is unsalted, but today I'm going to just use water. And you only need about a half a cup to a cup, depending on how much you have in there. I just eyeball it. I know how much is in there. The more water you put in there, the more liquidy the food is going to be. So it's a lot easier to get it out of the crock pot once it's cooked if you have not quite as much water. If it's too soupy, it just is harder to work with. Even though it solidifies a little bit in the refrigerator, you want it to come out like a wet Mm, porridge or oatmeal when it's done cooking then for me I grind it up you can just mix it up really well if you've got dogs that have all their teeth I've got three dogs that have 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 had dentals where they've had to have their teeth removed some of them before we even got to rescue them but I do have one dog that has just four teeth and they're all in different places so they don't work together so she needs everything pureed so I just puree my food for all my dogs Although they say that dogs need the crunchy kibble for their teeth, that they really don't. What they need is attention to their dental. So I do brush the teeth of my dogs. And I also put a supplement in my dog's food that is good for their teeth, good for that bacteria in their mouths that sometimes fight against their teeth. I put the water in here so we're good to go. And then we're going to cook this on low. So this is called gently cooked. And what that means is we're not going to cook it to death. We were going to gently cook it to where it's just cooked enough for our dogs and where it's safer for me. I know a lot of you out there may like to feed your dogs raw, and that's fine too. But with five dogs in my house, that's just a lot of raw things going on. And I really don't have as much time to be preparing the raw food and cleaning all the things that have touched the raw food. So for me, I've been doing this for 10 years and this works extremely well for me. My dog's blood work is perfect in almost all of them. Again, I have uh, three of them that came to me with mitral valve disease. We're working with them. My two labs are in perfect health. They're just getting a little older, but they're still in perfect health. We are going to cook this eight hours on low. If you have your meat and it's a little bit frozen still, you may want to cook it a little bit longer. So you may want to go a full 10 hours. I would say anywhere, if you only have a pound of meat in here, you don't even need to do eight hours. I would do probably six hours on low, as long as it's refrigerated and not frozen. And then when we're done, I'll show you the rest of these. And I also have a tip for you. So in each video, I try and educate you a little bit more on some things that I've researched and found over the years by following some holistic vets and today is no different so I am going to tell you about some foods that you probably want to avoid for your dogs and we'll come up with that after this has cooked for eight hours so I'll see you soon. If you have a dog that has some high liver enzymes or a liver condition some great treats for them are freeze-dried beef liver heart or green tripe or sweet potatoes. 
So I hope that you enjoy this little tip. Welcome back. I hope you had a productive day like I did. We're going to finish our batch of dog food, so let's get to it. Okay, so our food has cooked for at least six hours on low. If it was frozen, you were going to do it at least one or two hours more. If you have a very small batch, six hours is perfect. If you have a ton of meat in there and it's not completely thawed, eight hours works as well. My crock pot is amazing because once it turns off of the six hours, it leaves it on low for another four to six hours, which I never need it that long, but in case I'm out for the day or whatever, it'll hold it on warm for me until I get back. And then I turn it off when I get home or when I'm get done with what I'm doing for the day and then I let it cool down so it's not too hot for me to work with. That's super important to make sure we stay safe and it is just slightly warm now but nothing that I need to worry about. As you remember I have a few ingredients that I still need to put in. Uh, one of them being my canned 100% pumpkin. The other are my sardines. So these are unsalted wild caught sardines in spring water. I got these from Trader Joe's. You can put these in with their serving. So if you have one dog, you can put one or two sardines in with their meal and just sardines are easy to break up. Uh, I just put them all in here because I have a lot more dogs. And so I'll be putting uh, multiple cans directly into the batch now that it's cool. The other thing that I'll be putting directly into the batch is my minerals and also my vitamins. So I use RX Essentials multivitamin supplement for dogs and also canine minerals as well. I think the minerals are even more important than the vitamins because this is a pretty well-balanced meal right here, but some of the minerals need to be added. I also put some sea kelp in there and some mushrooms, sacred seven mushrooms, mushroom extract powder. If you want to know why I put these in, go to my first video and I explain why I put all of these things into my food. And the way that I do this is I typically will break my batch into two because that's what fits easily into here. If you're cooking for one dog, it will probably all fit into your food processor. If you don't want to use a food processor and you just want to really well mash it up, just get like a ground beef masher and put it into the container that you're using and that will work just fine. Uh, I put in, and I started to do this already, but I, <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself. I use the canned pumpkin and I just put a little bit on each side so that I know that I have it incorporated into both sides and that will be the rest. So I've got some on one side and some on the other side. The other thing I put in right as I'm letting it cool is frozen blueberries. This is not part of the recipe, but this is something that is good for my dog's weepy eyes because I have three Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. They have very weepy eyes. They get kind of the brown in their eyes. So blueberries, just a few blueberries a day really help with that. So does using filtered water in their water bowls. Those are some tips on those things. So let's start to incorporate this together and then we'll put this away and we'll be done with our meal for the day. I just use a little rag in between the two because I inevitably will get juices pouring down on between. It makes my cleanup a little bit faster. And again, I just cut this in half just so I have a general idea of where half is. So I know that I'm not overloading my food processor. The reason why I use a food processor for mine is because I have dogs that have very few teeth, a few dogs that have very few teeth. I have one that has four and they don't actually work together. They're in different parts of her mouth. So this just allows her to be able to eat her food without choking. And then it's already cut up so that it's period actually, so that she doesn't have to worry about the digestion part of it. You know, as we chew our food, it's part of the digestion process. So she doesn't have that ability. So we help with doing this and the other dogs are fine with it. I brush my dog's teeth so I'm not concerned about them eating soft food and in fact it's a myth that hard dry dog food 
which I don't recommend to begin with. Um, it's not really good for their teeth necessarily. Just like us, if we chew on crackers and things like that, doesn't really help our brush our teeth, right? So it is important to brush your dog's teeth if you wanna keep them out of the, the need for dental work. Although if certain breeds do have more need for dental work than other breeds. And so all of my vegetables that we put in earlier are all nice and very dissolved towards the bottom of this batch. Also, my diced beets are all nice and soft now. Again, this is a specific recipe to help our dogs, but it's also a very well-balanced recipe, so you can feed this at any time, and it will support your dogs no matter what their ailments are. In the description box below, I spend a lot of time making sure you have all the information you need so that you can do this really easily at home. I feel very strongly that this is the best way to feed our dogs and give them their happiest, healthiest lives. So I want you to have everything you need to make this process work. So in the description box below, you'll see the recipe that I used. You'll see the supplements that I use. You'll also determine how much you need to feed your dog. Uh, again, you would use 2% or 3% of their body weight to determine it. 2% would be more ideal if they have a little bit of body weight to lose. 3% is a little bit more of a maintenance. Again, I know I gave you tips on some of the foods that you don't want to feed to your animals. I also list a another list that's a little bit more extensive that is not designed by Dr. Judy Morgan, but but I'll put the where I got it from in the description box as well. And if you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I will certainly get back to you. I always answer all my comments and I appreciate it so much when you guys take the time to give me your comments or questions, I love to be able to help you as much as I can. Okay, so we're going to put some of our supplements in here now. I have, I use uh, a labeling machine and I tell myself how many of each I need because I have several bottles and I don't want to put the wrong amounts in. So I split it up and the way I do that is I use, I put some of it directly into the batch and then I use this cup for the other batch that's still inside of the pot. So it comes out like this, so I can just pour it in when I'm done with this first half of the batch. So I'll do this real quick. I can't count and talk at the same time, so, so I just speed it up so you don't have to watch me count. So all of my dogs have gone to bed, and my husband as well. One dog that never leaves my side, and this is Charlie down here, he is my little helper and is always here if I need some help or if he needs to lick something off the floor that I've inadvertently dropped. All right, next I'm going to use my RX Essentials for Dogs Vitamins. I use this just like I do for my own multivitamins. Just sometimes if I'm not sure I'm getting everything I need, it's like a insurance for me and I do the same for my dog. I think that this meal has the perfect amount of food for them, perfect amount of nutrients, but just in case, I do put in a multivitamin supplement as well. I also put in my sacred mushrooms, mushroom extract, and this one, this is a lot less. And lastly, I will put in my sea kelp. You can certainly put this directly in to their bowl when you're divvying this out for their feedings. I don't do that just because I have these five dogs and so for me to try and do this at each meal is a little bit more than I'm able to do. I also share this responsibility with my husband and no need to make his life harder either. So that is why I put it into the batch. When I divvy this up in the morning or in the evening, I feed twice a day. I will put it on a I put it on a plate and then I put the plate into the microwave and I put it on an extremely low setting just because you really want to get it to at least room temperature, if not just slightly warmed. You do not want to feed this cold to your dogs. Also in the, in the description box where I have the feeding amount, keep in mind that that's for a day. So as an example, because I feed twice a day, I have to cut that amount in half. I, what I used is a scale. I measured the amount and I use a ice cream scoop. 
So when I'm done with this, I will scoop it up. And I know that a flat scoop amount, as an example, for the three Cavalier King Charles, they each get two flat scoops. And that equals the amount that they're supposed to have per meal. So I scoop it up, make sure it's flat, and I give it to each of them. They are all three at very good weights. And that is attributed to this food because I got them all overweight. And they're all now at good weights and their doctors are happy because they do all have mitral valve disease and that is something where we want to maintain a very healthy weight for these dogs. All right, so I'm going to whip this up and then I'm going to show you the consistency and then I am going to let you look at the description box below. Make sure you give me a like if you enjoyed this content and you found it helpful. Also share this out to other people. I'm a small channel and so I appreciate Anytime you share this out to other animal lovers, also subscribe and you'll find other content on my channel aside of just dog health. And hopefully you'll like some of that as well. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified every time I have new content. So let me put the top on this and we will get it whirling around and then I'll show you the consistency. Okay, I think that was pretty good. Again, I'll be careful because I have those other supplements in here. Let me show you what this looks like. I'll come closer to the camera. Bring this with me. Now this is still a little bit warm, so keep that in mind as you see what the consistency looks like. But it looks like a really good oatmeal, mm, porridge, that kind of a thing. And then if I use my scoop, you can see that if I use, so when it comes out of the fridge, it's a little bit harder because some of the fats have gotten a little bit cooler, but this is how I would, I would scrape it off against the side. And then I have two scoops for each of my three Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. And that's how I would do this. So, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to finish the second half of this batch and then my dogs will have fresh food for the next three days. And then I'll be at this again. Look for some other videos. If you have an ailment of your own pet and you'd like some help, let me know what it is and I'll look, see what I have in my arsenal and we can make a video for you and for your pet. So thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate everybody showing up and I know your animals, your pets will appreciate this as well. Thanks for helping them live their happiest, healthiest lives. I want to share with you some foods you just don't want to feed to your dogs. And there's a lot of information out there. Some of it can be a little bit conflicting and some of it may be a little bit outdated. So I wanted to make sure you knew about the foods that you definitely don't want to feed to your dogs. The first one is chocolate and some of you may be like gosh that's my favorite food which it's mine <laughs> why can't we feed our dogs chocolate chocolates have theobromine in it and theobromine can cause seizures and hyperactivity tremors irregular heartbeat and even death so definitely keep your dogs away from that chocolate and if they ingest chocolate make sure you call your vet and give them the details about how much they ingested the weight of your pet and things along those lines so they can give you the right thing to do if your dog eats chocolate the next one is macadamia nuts so macadamia nuts can cause vomiting weakness tremors a drunken walking and even death so keep those macadamia nuts away from your dogs. And that would include like macadamia flour or anything that would have macadamias in it. Then there's grapes and raisins. So this could cause kidney failure, vomiting, diarrhea, and death in some dogs. Unfortunately, I witnessed this firsthand with my sister losing a dog who got into some garbage that had grapes in it. So be careful with those grapes and raisins. Grapes and raisins may cause diarrhea and dizziness, vomiting, and kidney failure, and even death. Then there's onions and scallions. Onions and scallions can cause anemia, vomiting and diarrhea, bloody urine, and the effects of eating onions is cumulative. Keep the onions away from your dogs unless you need it for a very specific reason and you have consulted your vet about it. Green tomatoes, tomato vines, and tomato leaves cause vomiting, diarrhea, and seizures. 
So you want to keep those away if you're, especially if you're grooming your, your tomato plants out there, make sure you're throwing away those leaves and the branches and any of the green tomatoes that maybe fell off the branches. Raw and green potatoes are also bad for dogs. They can cause diarrhea, vomiting, heart arrhythmia, and seizures. So make sure your dogs aren't getting any raw or green potatoes. Rhubarb. When I found out this about rhubarb, I pulled up all my rhubarb plants that are in my yard. It causes tremors and seizures, heart arrhythmias, kidney disease, and rhubarb high in the oxalates. And I mentioned about spinach being high in the oxalates. So, so is rhubarb. Nutmeg is a spice typically that you'll find in your cabinet. So you want to keep this away from your dogs as well. It causes tremors, muscle spasms, seizures, and even death. Persimmon seeds, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what person seeds are, but if you do, keep them away from your dogs. Raw dough or yeast. I have a story about this where my daughter was making paw print ornaments for Christmas and she used all this dough and she was putting the paws of our dogs in the dough because she thought it would be a super cute ornament and they, they were, but she turned around turned back and the dough was gone. And so she had no idea which of our five dogs had actually eaten the dough. And she was in a panic and called me hysterical crying. It's just important that you make sure that you keep the dough and the yeast away from your dogs. This was fortunately a type of dough that was specific for making molds and for doing these ornaments. And so it didn't have everything in there that normal dough and yeast have. But dough and yeast can produce ethanol, and ethanol causes liver failure, seizures, a drunken gait, coma, and even death. Then there's alcohol. I get so upset when I see shows where people are feeding their dogs beer and they think it's so funny when they drink their alcoholic drinks, but alcohol can be detrimental to dogs as well. Alcohol causes depression, weakness, liver failure, coma, and even death. Raw salmon or raw trout, they can carry parasites that cause poisoning. So you can provide salmon that is canned, cooked, or frozen. Also pits, so apricot, plum, peach, and cherry are harmful to your dogs because they contain cyanide. It causes shock, cardiac arrest, vomiting, and even death. So keep those pits away from your dogs. And the last one I have for today is avocado peel. Avocado peel causes vomiting, diarrhea, and fluid accumulation. So make sure when you're getting rid of your avocado peels that they go directly into the garbage and not to your little dogs that are waiting for the scraps, right? I hope this helps. There's a lot more information that I'd like to share with you in upcoming videos. Please make sure that you watch my very first video on making homemade dog food. I'll link it here so that you can watch it. And it has a lot of information about why you'd want us just cook for your dogs, why you want to put certain foods in each of your batches, and just how simple it truly can be. Mm -hmm.